Hi, it's Lee, and welcome to The Tesh Economist. Something within the EV industry that concerns me is how hard it is to get EVs ramped and profitable, as we're seeing even the almighty legacy companies struggling so much, let alone the likes of Rusid or even Rivian, who attempted the Tesla route in small quantities with a higher-end product, but fail on a catastrophic level. People laugh when they hear targets from GM about becoming 50% electric by 2030 or something, and that they'll be bankrupt before then, and consumers won't want to buy ICE cars anymore. But consumers will buy what they can afford, and if EVs are still costing too much to make, then they still won't buy them. Sure, governments will help where they can, but there's a lot of work for Legacy to get their costs down still. It's not easy. It's much harder for them than Tesla, of course, due to the antiquated dealer network, along with labour unions and other costs like advertising. Not to mention cannibalising the existing profitable ICE business for a not-so-profitable EV business. Yes, we are all too familiar with the legacy dilemma, and people like to say they're just going to go bankrupt. But if they do, then who'll make the cars that the world need? The Chinese? These Chinese EV companies are not profitable either. Yes, possibly BYD, but I don't believe we've actually seen any official breakdown on their actual earnings just for BEVs, unlike Ford, who have kindly disclosed to us and make us realise just how impressive a job Tesla are doing. For me, this is one of the largest issues I still see with the industry, and potentially by association, Tesla as well. We want to see in aggregate economies of scale in the industry, This is what's required. However, we're seeing legacy pooling in perhaps in the region of a collective $200 billion over the decade to facilitate their transition to EVs. Hopefully with that, Tesla and the Chinese eventually, the bandwidth does open up and costs do come down. Tesla are going to extremes of new manufacturing techniques, vertical integration, and massive economies of scale with single vehicle models that sell in very high units in order to hit these economies of scale to get costs down. Legacy will have to follow. Gone will be the days of new model refreshes every five years. They will have to milk the same model for longer periods and refine it further to save costs, like Tesla have been doing, with just minor facelifts from time to time. Actually, that's very similar to the Toyota business model and hence why they are also able to get a lower cost vehicle. However, Toyota also keep it basic, similar to BYD, whereas with a Tesla, you expect a little more with the brand. Of course, the obvious feature being autopilot or FSD, along with an overall better driving experience and safety. Legacy need to go back to the drawing board and look at first principles of how they can save money. Third-party suppliers are evolving too, like CATL, are able to produce structural battery packs now, which save in cost and weight. Whether they go to the extreme of using castings is another question. And judging by their progress in FSD, Legacy are not going to get close to an affordable alternative to Tesla's FSD. And if that is something that becomes essential for many drivers, they will simply have to license from Tesla as much as they hate it. But Tesla are already doing what they can to facilitate Legacy's transition too, with opening up charges, which makes a non-Tesla EV significantly more convenient. I mean, Tesla aren't being bashful about how to make an EV. They're giving everyone the footpath on what is required in order to do this, and obviously leaving all the patents open to everyone too. You might say because Tesla's mission isn't to make profits, it's to make a sustainable future. But I think either way, Tesla incentivizing and encouraging other players to enter the EV industry is going to end up being more profitable for Tesla in the long run too. Consumers need to be convinced still to buy an EV over an ICE vehicle. How do I know? Well, people are still buying more ICE vehicles over EVs. It's very simple. And if Legacy are going to make more efforts with EVs, they're essentially giving their badge of approval that EVs are the future, which by association is also saying that Tesla is the future. And a great example of this is when we saw Legacy advertise, particularly for the Super Bowl, when we saw Legacy advertise all their future EVs that won't be out for another year or two. But we end up seeing huge search volumes on Google Trends for people searching a Tesla. EVs are still a new market and consumers are still weary of them and obviously there's been a lot of negative press surrounding them and Tesla. If consumers see the likes of Ford, GM or Volkswagen saying that EVs are the future too, it makes them feel more comfortable in purchasing an EV. Of course, it is a lot of money too. It's a lot more than going from a flip phone to a smartphone. So consumers do see an element of risk 
And yes, of course, Tesla could do something about this too with an advertising campaign. And all those hyperbulls who say Tesla don't need to advertise would quickly change their tune if Tesla did start advertising. They would suddenly start claiming it's the best 3D chess move Tesla could have done in some way to spin it. Tesla nor Elon can do nothing wrong in their eyes. And just as a side note, if I was Tesla, I wouldn't be advertising now either. Not until the new Model 3 Highland was launched and the new Model Y Juniper and maybe the Cybertruck. Then hopefully offering the latest in technology with Hardware 4, which may hopefully be very impressive indeed. There are a few legacy EV players like Hyundai, Ford, Volkswagen, Mercedes, who are trying. I would say GM, and despite how many models they have announced or are attempting, their performance says elsewise. I mean, is it just hyperbole? Are they just making regulation vehicles with no intention of actually doubling down on EVs eventually, and just trying to look good for the shareholders, that they are taking it seriously? Some of you may recall that Volkswagen meeting that the executives ran in how to essentially copy Tesla. It would appear that they are taking it seriously, but are struggling so much. Of course, the enormous battery factories they're building are real too, and so is the associated cost, which in turn will provide a lot of economies of scale and vertical integration that they'll start saving a lot of cost. And this will be starting from around next year. After that, they have the rest of the decade to try and reduce costs and hope the industry also helps. And Wright's law, of course, gets thrown around a lot and hopefully is prevalent in the EV industry. However, they'll never be able to compete on cost with Tesla, nor obviously the price point, unless they wanted to lose a lot of money. Why? Well, the main reason is the Model Y is pretty much the best-selling vehicle in the world. You can't compete with that sort of economies of scale. And then it is now at the lowest price point, like for like, than any other EV, undercutting the likes of the Ford Mackey already, which is losing a fortune on each sale. So Ford will never be able to compete with a Model Y. I mean, just do the economics. Ford would need to hit more economies of scale in order to reduce costs, which means they would have to offer a more compelling vehicle at a lower price point. They can't even manufacture enough of them in the first place. Then, like we always say, there's the unions and dealerships. A Ford will always be more expensive than a Tesla, but a rational consumer will buy the Tesla. Perhaps the likes of Mercedes, BMW, Porsche can get away with higher prices than a Tesla due to their brand value and may be profitable despite selling fewer cars than Tesla. And maybe they can hit economies of scale in other ways like battery packs or what people used to call the skateboard or the base of the EV that can be built on with various models. The other alternative is just to cut range, offer vehicles of 150 or 200 miles of range instead, and perhaps that saves enough on the battery costs and there's still some profit and there'll be enough charges around in the world eventually, yet it would still be tough to be competitive with Tesla on price. I can't see many legacy manufacturers making it successfully or profitably into the EV market, aside from the more prestigious brands. Now, what will that say about the EV industry? Well, it would mean that EVs are perhaps perceived as a prestigious car. Porsche and Mercedes make them, they're top brands, and Tesla make them too. So by association, Tesla is also a prestigious brand because they make EVs. Well, possibly, but then there's all the Chinese. Now the Chinese EVs are doing better than legacy when it comes to profits. However, I think we can attribute a lot of these cost savings from the fact that they are made in China and with no unions or car dealerships. And Elon even said that Shanghai makes the lowest cost Teslas. China has a lot of competitive advantage in manufacturing, but then any nation with a domestic auto market is going to protect their market religiously. And it's often their largest industry. Look at Japan, Germany, or even the US. Massive industries that support a lot of jobs. So protectionism will be used in order to keep the Chinese out. Besides, the Chinese vehicles that are affordable are not great cars, but some are getting very low cost and may even be suitable for consumers who couldn't before afford a brand new ICE car. It really is difficult to tell how this industry will go, but one thing is for certain is that Tesla is determined to continue to grow and every time Tesla sells another car, that's a customer that Ford, GM or someone else just lost and likely won't get back which will only further encourage them to fight fire with fire, or EVs with EVs, which will likely mean further losses and further cannibalization of their ICE business. Each time Tesla sell more vehicles, or even the Chinese EVs, then there's fewer legacy sales and fewer ICE legacy sales. 
then each time Legacy make more EVs, then there's also fewer ice sales, likely from them further cannibalizing their own ice business, whilst also approving of Tesla's electric business, which is a downward spiral. It makes you wonder how long these sorts of financials can go on and how much the governments will be willing to help. However, if governments are helping, then it likely will be to grow EVs, not prop up ice. I mean, it's hardly a price war when Tesla are still making a profit and have already undercut legacy on prices and legacy are losing about as much as the EV is selling for. So I don't think it's a race to zero either. At the same time, if legacy did actually go under, then there wouldn't be enough vehicles for all the consumers, whether ice or electric. I think this needs further thought. So let me know your opinions too in the comments. Thanks for listening. Please hit the thumbs up and subscribe. You can follow me on Twitter and talk to me on Patreon.